Good morning, church. What a beautiful time of worship, how we are reminded of the beautiful name, the wonderful name, and of course, the powerful name of Jesus. Before we move on to our message this morning, let's enjoy our announcements. Good morning, family. Thank you for who you are. As pastor, I was so blessed to hear an amazing testimony, a testimony of God's grace through you giving in a time of need. Not just to Timothy's, not just to Potter's Wheel. But what happened is there was a woman in a Mabon clinic who was facing a life-threatening situation and needed a life-saving operation. The problem was there was no blood available for the operation. And so Helen put out a call to the church to ask our family, is there anyone that would like to give blood? There was an overwhelming response People were prepared to drive from Menzi. Thank you so much. Giving blood bless this woman with new life. You know, as I think about that, this person wasn't even part of the church. But this is what Jesus did. He gave his blood for you and I. That we could have a new future, a new life, that we could be a new creation. So as a pastor of the church, I am truly blessed and honored and privileged to see the fruit of giving in our church. Giving in a very different way. And uh, this opened my eyes to the realization that we really need as a family in the church to start considering how we can give in different ways and this is one way we can give. If you're interested and available to give blood in a time of need, could you contact Pastor Helen and give your blood type? and. Uh, if there's an emergency, if you're available, if it's possible, if it's right for you, maybe this is one way you can give and save lives. Thank you, family, for saving lives, changing this nation one life at a time. Today, somebody wakes up with a new life because of the blood that the Lord Jesus shed for them and the blood you gave. God bless you. Congratulations, family. Last week was the first Sunday for our children's church programs to be screened on Eswatini TV. A special well done to the children's church team and the media department for putting in all the hard work and ensuring that this happens. The programs shown are the same ones we used at the start of the lockdown, and they air every Sunday at 7 a.m. For the latest children's church programs, Join us on Online Church every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. These episodes are also available on our Pottersville YouTube page. Again, well done, family, and be blessed. Thank you so much to everyone who's contributed to the food drive for the ICBCs led by the Timothys. And we really, really appreciate you. The Timothys appreciate you. And just if you haven't caught up yet on what the Timothys are doing, here's some more information on their heart for the ICBCs. Hi everyone, I'm Cece, I'm a Timothy, ICBC. If you're new to Potter's Will Church, ICBC means in community by community. It was a vision birth with desire for church and ministry plants to be established in the rural areas by the people that live there to serve their own communities through their churches. At the moment, CMS has planted 14 ICPCs, but we have a vision to see 60 ICPCs planted throughout Eswatini. Hi, I'm River Rache. ICPCs is all about the community serving the community. We believe that Pattersville is part of that larger community of our ICPCs. The global pandemic has had an effect on our ICPCs. Most people have their homes in rural areas but actually go to town to find work. But with COVID-19, there are less jobs available, so they just return back to their homesteads. This intensifies the need for food, as there are more mouths to feed, but no income to feed them. So how can you help us? We're going to be collecting non-perishable food for the ICBC that can be sent to the ICBC for the September monthly food delivery. We are also looking for canned food and soaps. There will be a box available in the church foyer where you can gladly put your donations in. At the end of this month, we will then donate your donations to every ICBC throughout the country. Thank you, Pottersville, for partnering with us to serve our larger community within Eswatini. 
Let's work together to serve our nation. Be blessed. We are in the series, the season we are in now. Last week, Pastor Kevin shared on the message, building yourself up. That we are to build ourselves up by praying in the Holy Spirit. And today's message is, keep yourself in the love of God. Jude 20 and 21. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. In his book, Jude shows us that some people have begun fellowshipping with God, but they have failed to keep themselves in the love of God. Thus, they haven't achieved the full potential of God's plan for their lives. Sadly, they have failed to keep themselves in that place where God could bless them. In verse 5, he says, But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. The children of Israel, who though were delivered out of Egypt, perished in the wilderness. They did not enter into the full blessing God had for them because they didn't keep themselves in the love of God. Though they had experienced deliverance, they didn't come to the full benefits of God's work in their lives. They failed to keep themselves in the love of God. In the wilderness, the people's fear led to them failing to trust God. As a result, they rebelled against his plan. Even though Moses assured them that God will fight for them, just as he did in Egypt, they did not trust God to fulfill his promise, which was to enter the land he had promised to Abraham, as Isaac and Jacob. That's what fear does. It leads us to rebel against God. In Deuteronomy 1 verse 8, it reads, See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord sowed to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to give to them and their descendants after them. Isn't that what we do sometimes? Even though we might have seen God coming through for us in the most difficult times of our lives, but still we fail to keep ourselves in the love of God by allowing fear to creep in. Here the children of Israel rebelled against God and trusted their limited wisdom. That's what we do as people. We put too much trust in our limited wisdom and miss out on the big promise and the bigger picture that God has for us. But we are called to keep ourselves in the love of God. Look to your neighbor and say to them, keep yourself in the love of God. Yes, keep yourself in the love of God. The word keep here means preserve, keep in safety and protect from harm, decay, loss or destruction. In the old days, salt was used to preserve meat. But here, God uses his love to preserve us. I remember as a young girl growing under the care of my aunt, Mam Kuluwami, I noticed something. I noticed that she had installed a home safe in her bedroom, which at that time I thought it was strange, where she kept all her documents, including her most precious jewelry. I asked her because I was very curious, why are you keeping this in your bedroom? She gave me a very good reason for that, which I still hold dear even today. She told me the reason she was doing that is for security purposes. And that she always have a peace of mind knowing that her valuable items are kept safe and they are available each time she wants to use them. Wow, I love that. I do that myself today. But where can we keep ourselves safe? In God's love. Hearing this command from the book of Jude might raise questions in your mind. Like what does it mean to keep myself in the love of God? If God's love is unconditional, then why are we commanded to keep ourselves in it? Jude is not saying we should do something that will make God love us. It's not about us earning his favor, but it is about us keeping ourselves in the place where he can do all that he wants to do for us. We cannot buy God's love. There is nothing we can do to end God's love. He loves us just the way we are. You know, as a teenager at school, 
you know, you, you, you're looking for love. You are happy when somebody tells you they love you. So the boys in my class will write a note and put in my bag. And during lunch or break time, I will find that note in my bag and read it. It will normally read like this. Two beds sitting under the chakaranda tree, spelling the word L-O-V-E. Oh, after that, I want to tell you, I'm not going to hear anything from the teacher in the next class because I am now crazy. I've been told I'm being loved. But hey, that's not the kind of love that God refers to here. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You may be in the midst of rebellion against God today, but he still loves you. So to keep yourself in the love of God simply means keeping yourself in the place where you experience the blessings that God has for you. So that requires you to stay in the sphere of his love. How do we keep ourselves in the love of God? The first thing that we need to do is to receive the love of God. God's love is the only love that never falters and never fails. We need to have a love connection with our God. You know, I know that is hard, but 1 John 4, 9 says, in this, the love of God was manifested towards us. That God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might love through him. We love through him. I have personally struggled when it comes to receiving God's love due to certain influences in my life. I am sure you can also relate to that. In my personal journey, hey, I realized that I had a really hard time receiving God's love and being able to connect with his love. It also took me some time to understand that the problem wasn't God. And I also realized that it wasn't me. It wasn't that I'm unlovable. But the problem was there were some interferences, some battles that were seeking to create a sense of separation between me and God's love. Unkind words were repeatedly spoken to me that made me believe I was unlovable, that made me believe I don't deserve love. I struggled to see myself through the love of God because I was constantly told I am not good enough. I am a fool. I am not what I thought I was. I believed that. So I had a lot of self-pity, hatred, and self-accusation. I didn't see myself the way God did. I saw myself as someone who only deserved rejection, who only deserved pain. I didn't know how to receive this precious gift. Instead, I just blocked myself. I created a wall. Even though I had accepted him as my Lord and Savior, I still felt like it just ends there. There's nothing else I can do. I cannot receive. Why should I now receive his love? Because I don't deserve it. That's what I believe. Maybe you are also in that place. You have accepted Christ as a Lord and Savior, but you are disconnected from enjoying his love. I personally had emotional barriers that were blocking me from receiving the love of God. May I ask you this question? Do you have emotional barriers that's blocking you from receiving God's love? You know, sometimes we block the love of God by getting stuck into our past. Perhaps you've been through a traumatic event in your life, like I have been, and you are fighting it. it you find it so difficult to go through God. You want to experience happiness and fulfillment, but you feel like you are stuck in your past. That's where you belong. You feel like you are undeserving of his love. You are allowing your pain to speak to you instead of allowing God's love to speak to you. I want to say to you, pain has a voice, but God also has a voice, voice of love. Just like the children of Israel, you are afraid to trust and open yourself to receiving the love of God. I want to encourage you to open up to God's love and healing. Trust him to heal your wound and enjoy the power of his love. I would like you to say this prayer 
in Jeremiah 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Indeed, he is our praise. Also, we block the love of God. We don't receive the love of God due to root of rejection. Rejection is an act of throwing away or discarding something or someone. It is the act of being denied love. It's so painful to be denied love. After experiencing rejection from people that you are expecting love from them, it becomes very difficult for you to receive God's love. But God wants to heal us from the root of rejection so that we can walk in freedom and be kept in his love. When you have a stronghold of rejection, you see the entire world through the lenses of rejection, thus blocking yourself from receiving the love of God. We also block ourselves from receiving the love of God by believing lies. We believe lies from the enemy that we are not worth to receive God's love. His ways include accusing, lying, and dividing with the ultimate goal of separating you from the love of God. Revelations 12 verse 10 says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So we need to be very careful that we don't allow his plans to move us from the love of God. It is important every now and then to check Am I still in the receiving hand of God or am I in the receiving hand of the lies from the enemy? One of my favorite Christian authors, William MacDonald, writes this in one of his books. He says, the love of God can be compared to sunshine. The sun is always shining, but when something comes between us and the sun, we are no longer in the sunshine. What a beautiful picture he paints there. We can use an umbrella to keep us away from the sunshine, but we cannot stop the sun from shining. So we can move ourselves from the love of God by allowing sin and our selfish desires to block us from receiving his love, but we cannot stop him from loving us. When we rebel against God and choose to go outside the boundaries that he had ordained for us, then we miss out from enjoying God's best because God wants the best for us and the best by far. The best you're ever going to enjoy in this life, in this season we are in, is to be in the center of God's will. After receiving the love of God, build God's identity in you. I have a question to ask you today. Where are you tempted to find your identity? Are you chasing after the desires of your flesh to find fulfillment in who you are? 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and pride itself is not of the Father, but of this world. And the world is passing away and the last of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. If we are not seeking to build our identity in Christ alone, then it means we are building our identity somewhere else or in something else. If we allow God's identity to be built in us, we will not be crushed by failures and weaknesses. We won't fall into pride from worldly success. We won't get lost seeking the attractive but empty things the world offers because Christ gives us a stable and eternal hope in the world of unstable hopelessness. When we have God's identity building us, we'll not be shaken by hardships that we face in our day-to-day -day living. The Apostle Paul asked a very interesting question in Romans 8 verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sweat? Here, the apostle was referring to the pressures of life. It can be financial pressures, bad health pressures, and family relationship pressures. But when you are built in Christ's identity, all these pressures, even though they come hard on you, they will not move you from the love of God. 
you will know that you are secured. You are built on the rock and that is our Lord. I love a story that Jesus tells in Matthew 7. He shares a story of two builders. One built his house upon a rock and the other his house on sand. Storm came and the house built on the rock weathered the storm, but the one built on sand collapsed. You know, in the world or the season we are in, we are going to face storm. Storm will come, but where have we built our identity? That's the question we should ask ourselves. We are to build our identity on God. He's always there and always protective of us. Even when storm comes very hard, he keeps us strong in him. After building our identity in him, let's guard our hearts. You know, with all that has been said, there's this important thing that the Lord is asking of us. Guard your heart. When we read in Proverbs, we find a very interesting scripture there. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Just as you have a physical heart, you also have a spiritual heart. So the book of Proverbs says above everything else, you must guard your heart. You must protect your heart because your heart is the source of life. Everything about who we are flows from the heart. What goes in your heart affects the world around you. What goes in your heart affects your relationships, your marriage, your finances, and your careers. That is saying you cannot have the wrong thing in your heart and live right. And you cannot have the right thing in your heart and live wrong. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will keep my judgments. God is promising. He's giving us a big promise here to remove from us a heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. So that means we are now going to have a softened heart that we are to protect. We protect and guard our hearts by allowing the truth of God to govern us, by giving God reign over our hearts, allowing the Holy Spirit to minister into our lives. You know, sometimes life throws difficult things at us and those things harden our hearts because of pain, disappointments, rejection, experienced, our hearts get hardened. As I shared earlier on how much I failed to receive the love of God, it's because my heart was hardened because I had experienced hardship in my life. Maybe your heart has also been hardened now, but God wants to give you a new heart. He wants to wash away all those things that has created the hardness in your heart. I want to encourage you as well. As you guard your heart, guard your heart through prayer and noble thoughts. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. View your heart as a well. Whatever you put into that well is what you will take out. And the last point, continuously receive the love of God. This is a cycle. It's ongoing. We are to always receive God's love and affirmation from him. You know, my youngest son, Aki, who is 16 years old, he was introduced to tennis when he was eight years old. One day, I was watching him as he was practicing. He had just learned a new move called backhand. As I was watching him, I could see that he was proud of himself for mastering this new move. I noticed that before and after he had finished this new move, he would look at me to see if I saw what he did. I looked at him with a big smile and my head nodding, approving of what he has just done 
with his tennis ball and his racket. He did that several times. And I noticed that he just wanted to share the joy of the moment with mommy. It was an expression of love. Ah, this was an affirmation for our healthy mother and son relationship. Just so beautiful. However, that picture for me is a picture of how Father God would like us to look up to him, find affirmation from him. Even when this world gives us backhands, forehand, in various ways, facing difficulties in various ways, having so much negative words spoken to us, harsh things that we are experiencing. But you know what? God wants us to look to him. He wants to affirm, to affirm us. I want to encourage you. Do not look at what is going on around you. Look to our God. He is love. His character is love. His character is not changed by what we are going through. It's not changed by the situations or circumstances that we find ourselves in. He remains faithful. He is love. And he wants us to receive his love. I want to encourage you today to remember that God wants you to receive his love. So let's receive the love of God. Also, build God's identity in you. Guard your heart. Continuously receive the love of God. Continuously receive the love of God. I want to encourage you today. Maybe you've been in a place where you felt like, I'm not deserving of God's love. But God is saying to you today, here is my love. You deserve my love. Will you open up to the Lord and receive his love? Allow him to wash all the wounds of your pains from your past so that you can enjoy the relationship with him. Build your identity in him and know that you are his first and he is your father. Maybe you haven't even accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior. He's saying, come my son, come my daughter. Give your life to him this morning. If you want to give your life to the Lord, and you want to give your past, your pains to him, may I encourage you this morning to call the number on your screens. Someone will be there to pray with you. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for the gift of love. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you sent your only begotten son. And we thank you, Lord, that you are saying, let us come to you. You want to give us love and you want to give us your identity. We open ourselves to you, oh God, this morning, that you may wash all the pain, oh God, in our hearts so that our hearts may not be hardened, but let's open our hearts to you, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are giving us a new heart this morning. May we continue to receive your love day in and day out. May we continue to enjoy our relationship. May we know that you affirm us each and every day. Let's continue to look unto you, oh God. We thank you, Father. We bless your mighty name on high. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.